In a previous video, I showcased some vintage sports cards that PSA had certified and graded that had been exposed as obvious alterations by the folks on the Blowout Cards forum. This video expands the scope of that fraud by looking at other types of cards that have been proven to be altered, yet certified by PSA. The previous video looked entirely at vintage cards, including many that were obscure releases like Parkhurst Hockey and Look and See. But as you'll see, it's obvious that card doctors have altered nearly everything they could get their hands on. While the last video focused on cards altered by Gary Moser and sold by PWCC, it's clear that there are a lot more card doctors out there. This video adds other large-scale trimmers like Orange County Sports Investments, Lord Stanley 2012, Hawk Dynasty, and CC Card Factory, who are selling on PWCC as well as being top sellers on CheckOutMyCards.com. As before, all the credit for these discoveries go to the folks at the Blowout Cards Forum. This particular video focuses on the research of Corndog and 3124508 on ComC. Links to every card are in the description box below. Card doctors love to target PSA registry members by manufacturing low-pop PSA 10 examples out of lesser grades. Here are four examples. The trimming here is so minuscule that it's often difficult to tell even with before and after pictures. The giveaway is usually the new slab. Pay attention to how much of a gap there is between the edges of the card and the internal barrier in the slab. There's often a noticeable gap. I call these maraca cards or baby rattles because of the way the cards move around in the slabs. Trimming has to be the number one alteration done to a card, so you would think that PSA would measure every card particularly when they are certifying one as a PSA 10, but they don't. Of course, card doctors targeted vintage Topps cards of Hall of Famers. There were incredible profits made here. Here's a card that again makes you wonder if PSA is incompetent or complicit. It went from a Beckett Alter to a PSA 10. Look closely at the top and bottom edges. Neither one of them are straight. How did this get a 10? The trimming on the left edge of this Roberto Clemente is so obvious. Is it me or does the bottom left edge also look curved? Yet it got a mint grade. Here the card doctor, with an assist from PSA, created a 1 of 3 PSA 10 65 Yastrzemski. Imagine how you'd feel if you were a collector holding one of the other two legitimate 10s. This particular card is in the current number 2 finest 1965 Topps Registry set. Here's a manufactured 1 of 3 PSA 10 Banks card. The current owner has it in three different number one ranked Ernie Banks sets on the PSA registry. I wonder what he thinks about its alteration. Even worse, look at the centering and slight tilt on the back of the card. Hey PSA, how did that get a 10? Asking on behalf of every collector who has ever gotten back a 9. Finally, here's a vintage football card that never existed. A 1 of 1 PSA 10 68 Tops Bart Star. Just to show it's not just vintage cards being altered, here are some random modern cards in a variety of sports. These are just a small sample. There are so many more in the blowout thread linked below. All of these cards have been altered and later certified by PSA. Keep in mind that most of these cards are serial numbered and could easily be traced if only PSA did a Google search. Here are a couple of football cards. On the Palomalu, look at the C in the middle of the right side. You can easily see where it's trimmed. On the Eli Manning card, you can see the differences with the towel or the right angle in the blue pattern to see how much was taken off the bottom edge. Let's look at some modern baseball cards. The Ichiro had a bad edge at the top that was cleaned up with a trim and certified as a 10 by PSA. The Ortiz card was trimmed at the bottom. You can see the gap at the top of the slab between the card and the holder. 312 from Blowout exposed a ton of hockey cards that have been trimmed and sold on Com C. Here's a random one. The bottom right corner and the 5 on the uniform sleeve show where a slight trim was done. Here's one of the many basketball cards exposed as trimmed. Look at the distance between the ball hand and the left edge to see the evidence in this serial numbered card. Yep, a trimmed NASCAR card. Here's the scariest part of this fraud scandal for everyday collectors. These guys were literally trimming everything. Nothing was off limits. Here are some cards that hardly seem worth the trouble to trim. 
This is a $20 Aaron Judge serial numbered card that has been trimmed twice. You can really see a noticeable gap between the top edge and the slab. Maraca card. Here's a Jeter card that is probably worth less than $10. There's a noticeable amount of cardboard removed from the top edge. Very easy to see on the back. And here are a couple modern football cards that got a quick trim. What are these worth? Like a dollar? These last cards are the most damning for me. You can understand card doctors taking a risk by altering high-end vintage cards and hoping to get it by PSA for a four-figure payday. You can understand that inevitably some of these cards are going to get through PSA system. But when you see cards literally worth a few dollars being cut up and certified by PSA, you realize their system is horribly broken. These alterers had absolutely no fear that PSA would catch their work. They knew the cards weren't being measured, weren't being weighed, the serial numbers weren't logged and checked. They knew there were no effective countermeasures to detect alteration at PSA, and the floodgates opened. If you're a collector, how can you trust PSA at all right now? Let me know your thoughts and comments below. Before I go, I want to tell you about a great podcast, Wax Museum. It's a basketball card podcast that devotes a significant amount of time to the altered card scandal. It's well worth your time. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, or Podbean. A link is in the description box below. Thanks for your support of the channel with your comments and thumbs up. I'm very grateful to have broken the 1,000 subscriber mark. Stay tuned for more videos. And collect what you love.